continue designing with a grid, we're going to use Photoshop guides this time to lay out the different elements within this advertisement. Let's get started in Photoshop. Now this time when we go to new, we're going to create a new design for an HD TV. So instead of choosing the defaults, we're going to change from inches to pixels. When you're designing for the screen, you typically design in pixels instead of inches. Now an HD TV is 1920 wide, so 1920 pixels wide, and the height is 1080. So you probably heard of 1920 by 1080. Now typically we design a different resolution for a screen. So let's change that to 72. Now instead of having to type this in each time, let's save this as a preset so we can go back to it. So if you hit save as preset, we can give it a name. So I'm going to call this HDTV and go ahead and hit OK. And then from now on, when I want to get back to this, I can always just come up here to my document type and choose HDTV and it will bring that size back up. Okay, instead of using the grid that's on there, I'm going to use some guides. So I'm going to start by hitting Control apostrophe. And that'll get rid of my grid. And I'm going to hit Control zero so that it automatically zooms to fit the window. All right, I want to have a all right, I want to have a margin around the outside, and then I want to have several columns in here. To create your own guides, you can click and drag from a ruler out. And you can see this blue line is a guide. Try moving it around. So when you put your cursor over the top of it, you'll get this double-headed arrow, and that allows you to move the guide. You can do that from the top ruler or the bottom ruler. So create a couple of those. Move them around. Now that you've got some practice with these guides, let's hide them. So if we go to View, we can clear these guides. Let me show you another way to create a guide. Oftentimes you want to create a guide at a specific distance. I'm going to change my rulers from inches to pixels because I'm designing in pixels now. And let's go up to view again and new guide. And you can type in a specific distance. So let's say I want to have a 10 pixel margin. Um, how about a 20 pixel margin? I'm going to hold 20 and then PX for pixels and hit OK. You can see it made a vertical guide here at 20 pixels in. If I wanted to put another one out here on the far right at 20 pixels in, I'd have to do a little math. Now that my design is 1920, so that next guide would be at 1900. So let's go up to View and New. And I'm going to type in 1900 this time. Hit OK. And you can see I've got a guide at 20 pixels in from the right side edge. So you can see it's, it's pretty quick and easy to either drag your guides on there or create them with a view and new. One last time, let's go to view and clear guides. Now one of the really cool things in CC 2015 is an additional option down here and that's new guide layout. I love this. This is really super handy. So let's go ahead and open up that dialog box. You can see it automatically added a whole bunch of these guides. Um, it looks like the default is eight columns. So you can choose how many columns you want, what the gutter or the space in between the two columns. You can add rows. Let's say I want to have, I don't know, three rows or something like that. So you can see it automatically added these three rows and it can even have a margin around the outside. So I'm going to hit margin and I'm going to give it a 20 pixel margin all the way around the outside. So you can choose how many of these you have and you can choose how many rows and, and columns. Let's say I want six columns and three rows. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So that's just a really quick way of creating a ton of guides and a really nice open grid that you can now design in. So for example, let's say I want to place a photograph in here now. Let's go to File and Place. And by the way, I've given you a link to a website with a whole bunch of these cool uh, photographs from this event and you can use these to practice. I've even given you a document in here that has the dates and times and locations so you could just copy and paste that. 
I've gone in here and I've right clicked and downloaded a bunch of these photographs. So they are now in my downloads folder. You can move those to your data drive if you want or you could just keep them in the downloads folder for now. So if I go to file and place, now we're going to choose file place embedded so it becomes part of this document. If it's file place linked and later you mess around with those documents in the downloads folder, you're going to have trouble. So let's just use file place embedded. And I'm going to navigate to my downloads folder and I'm going to start with uh, this nice vertical picture here. It's going to come in and I'm going to move it over here. If you choose to resize, make sure you hold shift down so that it keeps it proportional. So I'm going to resize this a little and I'm going to shift it over so that I make sure that the dog's face doesn't get cut off. Okay, I'm going to hit the check mark and now I know I want to keep the margin around the outside and I want to get rid of the picture in the gutter here. So what we're going to do is we're going to mask our photographs. So we're going to grab the marquee tool and click and drag inside the marg uh, inside the guides and it should snap right to the guides. And that's the area, the dancing ants, is the area that I want to keep for this photograph. So I'm going to come over here to my layers panel and I'm going to click on the layer, add layer mask button. It looks like the Japanese flag. Boom. Let's try this again. Let's go to file and place embedded. This time I'm going to get a vertical or a horizontal picture. This cute one with the dog in its ears. I'm going to hold shift down and I want to fill this upper left hand, upper right hand corner with this picture. So I want to fill this rectangle with the picture. So again, you're going to hold down, grab the marquee tool, click and drag a box where you want to have the um, design and then hit the mask tool. So that's a quick and easy way of bringing your photographs in, masking them, giving them uh, a cool design. Now, sometimes you just want some color. You can see in our other design back here, um, this designer had just a, a rectangle with some color in it. So let's try that. Um, I'm going to create a new layer for that color. I'm going to call it box purple. And I'll grab the marquee tool, click and drag around this area right here. And I'll just grab the paint bucket. I've already got some purple color, so I'm just going to dump it in there. So you can see it's really easy to design with a grid using these guides. So again, let's try it again. Let's just practice. We're going file place. This one. I'll resize it, holding shift down. This one I want to just do these two boxes down here. So I'll grab my marquee tool, click and drag, hit the mask tool. So what I'm looking for is a nice gutter in between all the photographs and around the outside and a variety of different shapes in your in your columns and rows. You can choose as many columns and as ro many rows as you'd like, but you should also have the text. And so again, you can go into that document and copy that text. Uh, Control C, go back to Photoshop, grab my text tool. Um, I'm going to make sure that it's aligned left. Click and paste. I'm going to Control A to select all that. That's obviously too small. So we'll try a bit different size there. And um, in this case, I've got purple text on a purple background, and that's just not going to work. So let's change the color to black so you can see this a little bit better. There we go. You can also just resize using the handles. Just make sure that you give yourself a little bit of padding. Let me go ahead and select something else. A little bit of padding around the outside so the text isn't right up against the edge of the shape finish, make sure that you save it both as a Photoshop file and as a JPEG so that you can turn it in.